Well, thank you for joining us for part three of our How to Build Your Own Router with PFSense uh, video series. The first video in the series was building your router. The second video in the series was getting up and running with a VPN provider. So you can have your whole network encrypted with a VPN. Why would you want to build your own router when you could just buy a router? Well, you can do a lot of really cool stuff like automatically have your router connect to a VPN and control which ports and which IP addresses are accessible. Prevent your smart TV from getting online. And that's what today's video is about. Now... In the news recently, in the older videos, we covered reasons why you'd want to do these things. So go watch those. We're not going to repeat ourselves. But one thing we didn't cover because it just came out recently was the UPnP Broadcom router vulnerability. Now, this affects an insane amount of routers. If you have a common household router and you haven't upgraded your firmware recently. Probably too late. You're vulnerable. <laughs> and even if you do keep it up to date, this was out there in the wild a long time before it was figured out. So build your own router, you avoid that. You know, there was a guy on our forum today that sent me a message, and he has a cable modem that has a built-in router, and his ISP will not let him update the firmware, and it is totally vulnerable. <laughs> so there you go. Another reason to have your own router. Now, we showed you sort of the basics tonight. We're going to get into situations that give you more control, because when you have your whole router encrypted with a VPN, which is the second video, you can, it can cause you some problems. So tonight we're gonna to talk about three basic things. We're gonna talk about controlling your traffic by port, such as gaming over a specific port that you don't wanna run over the VPN because of latency. We're gonna talk about IP ranges and URLs and aliasing so that certain traffic via IP like Netflix or like Windows telemetry can be either sent over the WAN or blocked entirely. And finally, we're gonna talk about MAC address control because Internet of Things, <laughs> your refrigerator doesn't need to get on the internet and you can stop it from doing so at the router level. This is really nice because you can go in the router and turn on your TV to get a firmware update that you need, but turn off your TV's ability to phone home or do anything nefarious, which is perhaps nice and perhaps interesting, but you can do it all at the router. So we got about six examples, five or six, and they should, you know, working from there, you should be able to control your entire network as far as routing things. <laughs> Let's dive right in by logging into your PFSense installation and getting to the menu where you can click on stuff to do things. So let's take a quick tour of the user interface um, at the firewall. So basically go to your firewall menu up at the top and go to rules and add. And this is the firewall rules add screen. And you can see that you've got some options here. Action is what action to take on the rule that you're, you're taking. If traffic matches this rule, should it uh, pass, meaning be allowed? Should it be blocked? You know, that kind of thing. You can also pick the protocol. You can pick the interface that it runs on. Now we'll want to pick the LAN interface. We're going to do most of our rules on the LAN side. On the WAN side, if you have ports open, meaning that you allow traffic into your network, uh, you can set up rules so that only traffic into your network is allowed from a trusted IP address or maybe your friend's house or something like that if you're going to open up your media server. But for right now, we're just going to talk about traffic that is flowing from your LAN to the internet. Uh, the address family, IPv4, pretty much everything is going to be IPv4. IPv6 is a whole other can of worms. If your ISP uses IPv6, you can just disable IPv6 for more security because you don't understand it. For the protocol, most of the time you're going to want to pick TCP or TCP slash UDP, although we are going to get into some rules where we pick any. Um, and then you've got source and destination, and source and destination are exactly what they sound like. The source is the traffic source, meaning something on your LAN or a specific machine on your LAN, and destination is a destination IP address, a destination port range, something like that. Now you mentioned uh, gaming. Most games run on their own ports. So like 27015 is a really common port. StarCraft, for example, is like 6112. You might have to Google and say, what port does this game run on? Uh, so that you know how to target traffic for that specific game. Now at the bottom of the rule, there's also an advanced settings. Normally you don't really have to mess around in the advanced settings at all, but because we've got a VPN enabled on the router, there's two different routes that our traffic can take. Now we can just send the traffic out over the ISP's network interface, meaning it's on the internet as soon as it leaves our router, or we can shuttle that traffic through the VPN interface. So here you would choose from the gateway menu uh, where you want this traffic to come out. 
if you have a VPN set up, like we did in the second video, you would choose that. And if you wanted to go out over the WAN and ignore the VPN, you could do that. You could even run multiple VPNs and you can have more gateways than this. And you would always select them here in the advanced options. Yeah, so if you wanted to send a game over your ISP's connection, you would choose your ISP's gateway. If you were setting up, you know, um, banking or torrenting or something and you wanted that to use VPN A and you wanted, you know, VPN B to be used by other people in your house, you would set up those rules from those source IP addresses or those destination IP addresses, whatever, whatever criteria makes sense to you. And then you use gateway to pick which connection is actually used. In our example here, you can see that we actually have two VPNs as well as the WAN DHCP interface from our ISP. And then be sure to enter a description that makes sense because you can enable and disable the rule if you're having trouble. Now, if you have a game that uses more than one port, you can set a range like, you know, 6,112 to like 6,115. Generally, I wouldn't recommend setting a range wider than about 50 ports, give or take. Most of the time, you're going to want to enter the same destination port, start and end port. For the source port, you're never going to want to set that because that's usually randomly selected. Rules are the fundamental thing that you're going to be doing here. In that case, we did a port. But what if you wanted to do a range of IPs or even a group of URLs? In this case, we're going to show you Netflix. Now, Netflix doesn't just use Netflix.com. They have various CDNs and image servers and stuff like that. You need to allow them all. Well, PFSense gives you a really easy way to do that by setting up an alias. Yeah, an alias can be a group of fully qualified domain names or IP addresses or a combination of both. And under aliases bulk import, you've got a handy utility where you can just paste them in. So once again, we're going to go to Google and <laughs> Google for a list of uh, top level domain names that Netflix uses with their service so that we can set up an alias for all of those with Netflix. That way we can have just one rule that uses this alias, but will apply to you know dozens or hundreds of IP addresses. And conveniently, if you do it by URL rather than IP, and that IP changes at that domain, it will automatically refresh every time it hits it. And once we've got our uh, aliases added, we're just gonna hit apply changes. Now there's nothing that's referencing this alias yet, so we've gotta come over to firewall rules on the LAN, and add a new rule for this. And it works pretty much the same as it did when we were setting up StarCraft. We're gonna say protocol TCP slash UDP because we're gonna use both of those. Although we could use IP any, which would also include ICMP, which is things like ping. Uh, we're gonna come down to destination and we're actually gonna type in our alias and it will auto complete for us. And then of course, we're gonna add a description that makes sense. Once again, we have to go to advanced settings and we will want to pick the gateway that we want our Netflix traffic to go over. Now, if I mouse over the Netflix alias, you can see that there's a, you know, a list of aliases included with that. Now, if I ever, ever need to edit that, we can just go back to that same screen and hit edit, and it will have expanded the thing that I pasted in into one host per line, which is a little bit easier to deal with when you're editing. So in both of those examples, we were routing traffic over the WAN instead of the VPN because the VPN doesn't perform well with either of those services. But we can also block traffic, which is convenient, when you're working with Windows and you don't want Windows to spy on you. So we're gonna add a new alias for the Microsoft telemetry and add a description that makes sense because you gotta come back to this in three months and know what you did. And if you didn't label anything, you're gonna be confused. Now the Microsoft telemetry IP address list is a little more extensive than the uh, than the Netflix IP address list. So uh, and it's changing all the time too. So you'll wanna be sure to add all of those. Now you can pick up the address list that we used over at the level one text forums because we will have included it with this article. So you should be able to copy paste that, but it's probably not a complete list and the community will probably update it to be more complete and or mock us for not getting it right in the video. Once again, destination, we're gonna specify the alias name, apply our changes, and we're good to go. Now, one thing after you've added your rules that you can look at, there's this column called states. And what that means is these are the states that the router firewall is tracking, meaning you've opened a connection to Netflix or you've opened a connection to Microsoft or Microsoft has an open connection to you or whatever. And these are the number of states that the firewall is tracking, meaning that I'm tracking the state of an open port, meaning that it is open and is doing stuff. And you can see that here in this counter. And you can also see how much information has been transferred via that state. One of the caveats of that is once a state has been opened and you change a rule about it, if it's still open, that rule won't immediately take effect with that state. So if we start the Netflix rule, but we've already got a state open for Netflix, it's gonna keep doing what it was before until there's a new state. Uh, there's a setting that will let you control that, but by default, it'll just keep doing what's doing until that state is destroyed, which you can do. 
If you want to, if you make a bunch of rule changes and you want to reset the open states, this will reset any open connections you already have. So like if you have an SSH connection to an external machine or remote desktop or FTP or whatever, you can go to the, the main screen on your PFSense router and go to states and search through the states that are open, browse them or reset all of them. And that will reset all of the open connections on your firewall. And then from then on, the rules will take effect immediately. Now you might be tempted to use ping to verify that things are being blocked on the firewall. Ping is not a TCP or a UDP type of packet. It is called an ICMP packet. And so even if you set up rules for TCP and UDP, which covers most of everything, ping packets are ICMP. So if you're going to use ping to verify that the IP address is being blocked, you want to specify any for the protocol as opposed to TCP or UDP. If you're using ping to see if a connection is working, keep in mind that not all servers are going to allow ping. So it's not a great tool for verifying that. If for some reason you need to disable a rule or disable a rule temporarily, you can just do that right here from the interface. You can disable the rule and then you can you know, run a ping or run another connection test and verify that, oh, okay, the rule is now allowing connections through. And when you go from a block to an allow situation, you don't have to do anything with states because it'll just start working immediately because when it's blocked, it doesn't allow a state to be established. So we talked about port blocking and rerouting. We talked about IP range or URL. Now we're going to talk about MAC addresses. Now MAC addresses, you can't just plug in the MAC address like you did the port number or the IP range. You're going to have to go into the DHCP and enter that MAC address and assign it an IP address so that then you can use that IP address to block or allow or reroute or whatever. Yeah, for this video, we're assuming that you're using your PFSense router as the DHCP server for your network. And a MAC address is a quasi-globally unique address that is assigned to every piece of hardware on your network. It's a, it's a 12 digit number. that's like, you know, <laughs> D E A D B E E F like that. It's a hexadecimal digit. Your TV has one. You may be able to look through the DHCP leases table. If you go to status and DHCP leases, you can see all of the devices on your network that have asked your router for a DHCP lease, meaning that they've asked your router what IP address they should be using. So you can look through that maybe and find the MAC address of like your smart TV that you don't want on the internet or whatever. You can also get it off the back of the TV typically. You can key that in and set the router to always give that device a specific IP address. Once you do that, you can go back into your firewall rules, you know, your LAN rules, and instead of pass at the top, you would choose block. And so you would block all traffic from that IP address on your LAN. And because you've set the MAC address to always be that specific IP address, the TV or the smart device will never get another IP address from your DHCP server on your network. If you're a console gamer, you're gonna to wanna to do this instead of the port forwarding stuff for your console games. You want your entire console to go over the WAN to get rid of online gaming latency and stuff like that. And that's pretty much it. It's really not rocket surgery. Uh, if you get stuck or you have any questions, you know, come to the forum. Everybody on the forum will be glad to help you. I'm Wendell. I'm Ryan. And we'll see you there.